Dear brothers and sisters, I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to start with prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for this new day, Father. Thank you, Father, for your mercies are new every day, Father. Thank you for giving us fresh water, Father, fresh bread from heaven, Father. Thank you, Father, for, for, for pouring the cup unto, until the overflow. Thank you for being our author and finisher of our faith. We love you, Father. We, you started the good work in us. You surely will, will accomplish it. You will finish it until the day of Christ. We love you. We honor you. We worship you. We give you all the glory. We thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your spirit. Holy Spirit, we invite you. We love you. We honor you. Jesus, we honor you. We, we, we drink from your cup. We drink deeply. We drink deeply from your cup. You are the, the one who, who pours in. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, once again, I greet you all in the wonderful name. Brothers and sisters, we are in the morning prayer. Um, today I want to take a look at a prayer of Paul. He prayed it to the church in uh, Ephesus. Uh, let's uh, just jump into it. Ephesians chapter 1. For me, it's, uh, yeah, it's actually one of my favorite prayers in the Bible. And uh, Paul, Paul prays in his letters for the churches. And it's also good. We can pray those prayers. Yes. Um, uh, Ephesians chapter 1. I'm starting from verse 15. Yes, and Paul is praying for the church in Ephesus. He says, Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and, of, and your love for all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Yes, this is um, a very powerful prayer. Um, I, uh, I want to read verse 18 <clears throat> for a better understanding. We, we should understand and recognize the wonderful future to which he has called you or the hope of his calling. The hope of his calling it relates both to this earthly life and also it relates to the life to come. And Paul prays, since the dimensions of the glory is so great that God must open the eyes of our heart, we, he must open the eyes of our spirit that we can grasp what is the hope. We need, we need the spirit of wisdom and revelation to grasp it, hallelujah. What is the hope of his calling? Yes, God, he has called us with the holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own intention. And Jesus always, he calls people to him, to himself first. For example, he says to the fisherman, he says, come follow me. Jesus calls them out. Though the first thing he's calling his disciples, he's calling us to be near to him. He's calling us into his presence. And God's calling is to be close to him and to do everything 
for and through him. Yeah, um, those of us who were at the Freizeit in uh, Schwäbisch Gmünd, Daniel Friesen, he was speaking about the potter. And um, it's, uh, the picture is in uh, Jeremiah 18. And uh, God sent the prophet Jeremiah to the potter's house. And he says, there I will let you hear my word. And Jeremiah, he saw the potter forming the clay on the potter's wheel. And God, he is for, God shapes our life, our calling. He's forming us like, like we are the clay and God is the potter and we are like in his hands. And, and also in Jeremiah, God says in Jeremiah chapter 1, God says, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. And God even, he knew us before he formed us in our mother's womb. And he says, I already sanctified you. I recognized you. I, I call you. He has called us. And also in, in Psalm 139, we read that God also, he knew us even when we were unformed, like, like an embryo. God God knew us and, and God calls us to, to himself. And I, um, there is also a scripture, it says in Romans 11, 29, that the calling and giftings of God are irrevocable. Um, um, famous a Bible teacher from America, he's, he, uh, he's, his name was uh, Kenneth Hagen. He's already went to be with the Lord. And he, he once told a story. He said, there was a man following after God. But then, uh, after a time, he started to drinking alcohol. And he, he was a drunk. He was a drunkyard. And um, for maybe 10 years or even more. But then he, he, um, he came back to the ways of God. And the call of God was still on his life. God never took away the call. So God is faithful to our calling. And yes, in Romans, Romans 11, 29, he says, the giftings and calling of God are irrevocable. irrevocable. So God never, God never, he never will put his hands from our life. Even if the Bible also says, if we are unfaithful, he is still faithful. And let's, uh, let's recap the points now. The call of God for his saints, that is for you and me. It is so great that we need supernatural intervention and understanding. And uh, Jesus first, he calls us to be with him, to be close to him. And the third point is the specific calling, the gifts is irrevocable. God will never take it away from our lives. I want to close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your great faithfulness. Even if we are unfaithful, I pray that you give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the deep and intimate knowledge of ourselves, of yourselves. Open the eyes of our spirit that we may know what is the hope of your calling upon our lives, Father. We love you and we honor you. Holy Spirit, we need you so much. We praise you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen.